Chapter 8 When Dixie's bald spot started growing fur, and the fur that he had to begin with started looking shiny and healthy, and he didn't limp anymore, and you could tell that he was proud of looking so good, proud of not looking like a stray. I thought what he needed most was a collar and a leash. So I went to Gertrude's Pets, where there were fish and snakes and mice and lizards and gerbils and pet supplies, and, and I found a real handsome red leather collar with a matching leash. When Dixie was not allowed to come inside the store, there was a big sign on the door that said, No Dogs Allowed. So I held the collar and the leash up to the window. And when Dixie, who was standing on the other side of the window, pulled up his lip and showed me his teeth and sneezed and wagged his tail something furious. So I knew he absolutely loved that leash and collar combination. But it was very expensive. I decided to explain my situation to the man behind the counter. I said, I don't get a big enough allowance to afford something this fancy, but I love this collar and leash, and so does my dog. And I was thinking that maybe you could set me up on an installment plan. Installment plan, said the man. Gertrude! Somebody screamed in a real irritating voice. I looked around. It was a parrot. She was sitting on top of one of the fish tanks, looking right at me. An installment plan, I said, ignoring the parrot. You know, where I promise to give you my allowance every week, and you give me the leash and the collar now. I don't think I can do that, said the man. He shook his head. No, the owner, she wouldn't like that. He looked down at the counter. He wouldn't look at me. He had thick black hair, and, and it was slicked back like Elvis Presley's. He had a name tag that said, Otis. Or, or I could work for you, I said. I could come in and, and sweep the floors and dust the shelves and take out the trash. I could do that. I looked around Gertrude's pets. <laughs> there was sand and sunflower seed shells and, and big dust bunnies all over the floor. I could tell that it needed to be swept. Uh, said Otis. He looked down at the counter some more. Gertrude, the parrot screamed again. I'm real trustworthy, I said. I'm new in town, but my daddy is a preacher. He's the preacher at the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi, so I'm real honest. But the only thing is, when Dixie, my dog, he would have to come inside with me. Because, well, if we get separated for too long, he starts to howl something terrible. Ooh, Gertrude doesn't like dogs, said Otis. Is she the owner? I asked. Yes, I mean, no, I mean, he finally looked up. He pointed at the fish tank. That Gertrude, the parrot, I named her after the owner. Gertrude's a pretty bird, screamed Gertrude. She might like Winn-Dixie, I told Otis. Almost everybody does. Maybe he could come inside and, and meet her, and, and if the two of them get along... Then I could have the job. Maybe, Otis mumbled. He looked down at the counter again. So I went and opened the door, and when Dixie came trotting on inside the store, Dog! screamed Gertrude. I know it, Otis told her. And then Gertrude got real quiet. She sat on the top of the fish tank and cocked her head from one side to the other, looking at Winn-Dixie, and when Dixie stood and, and stared back at her, he didn't hardly move. He didn't wag his tail. He, he didn't smile. He didn't sneeze. He just stared at Gertrude, and she stared at him. And then she spread her wings out real far and flew and landed on 
top of Winn-Dixie's head. Dog! she croaked. Winn-Dixie wagged his tail just a little tiny bit. And Otis said, You can start on Monday. Thank you, I told him. You won't be sorry. On the way out of Gertrude's pets, I said to Winn-Dixie, You are better at making friends than anybody I've ever known. I bet if my mama knew you, she would think you were the best dog ever. When Dixie was smiling up at me, and I was smiling down at him, and so neither one of us was looking where we were going, and we almost bumped right into Sweetie Pie Thomas. She was standing there, sucking on the knuckle of her third finger, <laughs> staring in the window of Gertrude's pets. She took her finger out of her mouth and looked at me. Her eyes were all big and round. Was that bird sitting on that dog's head? She asked. She had her hair tied up in a ponytail with a pink ribbon. But it wasn't much of a ponytail. It was mostly ribbon and a few strands of hair. Yes, I told her. I seen it, she said. She nodded her head and put her knuckle back in her mouth. Then she took it out again real quick. I seen that dog in church, too. He was catching a mouse. I want a dog just like it. But my mama won't let me get no dog. She says if I'm real good, I might get to buy me a goldfish or one of them gerbils. That's what she says. Can I pet your dog? Sure, I told her. Sweetie Pie stroked Win Dixie's head so long and so and serious that his eyes drooped half closed and drool came out of the side of his mouth. I'm going to be six years old in September. I got to stop sucking my knuckle once I'm six, said Sweet Sweetie Pie. I'm having a party. Do you want to come to my party? The theme is pink. Sure, I told her. Can this dog come? She asked. Oh, you bet, I told her. And all of a sudden, I felt happy. I had a dog. I had a job. I had Miss Fa Franny Block for a friend. And I had my first invitation to a party in Naomi. It didn't matter that it came from a five-year-old and the party wasn't until September. I didn't feel so lonely anymore.